Hello, welcome to this presentation of the OpenStack Cluster Installer, aka OCI. Who am I? I'm Thomas. I've been packaging OpenStack since 2011, which is more or less when the project started. I work in Informaniac, which is the Swiss Zealand biggest hosting provider. And I'm also a contributor to OpenStack Upstream. How it all started? I first started to investigate solutions to install bare metal, like Mass, Foreman, Cobbler, Ironic, and I decided it wasn't adapted to what I needed. So I started my own project. OCI uses this technology, a DHCP server, Apache, a PHP MySQL, a TFTP server, and Puppet. OCI is made of 50% PHP, 25% shell script, and 25% Puppet manifests. Everything in Debian, when I say everything, I really mean it. This includes Puppet Manifest as well. The way the bare metal installer works is that your servers will be booted over PXE under a Debian Live system. In it, hardware discovery will start and send all the information to the PHP MySQL. Then a Debian scripted installation, which is not using the Debian installer, is started. Uh, the server reboots and then the first uh, boot scripts are hooked and then Puppet runs. Instead of explaining to you for hours how it works, I decided it was better to just show you. So let's start with a bare VM with this type of command and let's install OCI. So uh, all of OCI is available through X repo including all of the packages, including uh, the ones for Puppet. So here's an example on how to install it using um, OpenStack usury. Xrepo is a bit like PPA, except that it's not about Ubuntu, it's about third-party repositories for Debian. So what does this package repository contain? It contains an OpenStack release, there is one a Debian repository per release, it contains exclusively packages which are at least available in Debian and Stable, most of the time available from testing, and they are backported to the current Debian Stable. Uh, everything can be rebuilt from source using these uh, repositories, so you can tweak absolutely everything if you wish to. It's self-contained, and you don't need any other artifact to install OpenStack using OCI. And everything is packaged, including all the Puppet OpenStack packages from upstream. Let's install OCI on that new VM. So it's as simple as app get install OpenStack cluster installer, answering a few depth questions, and you're done. As you may see, it's not optimal video with Impress, but that should be all right. You'll be able to see still. Just wait for the DB to populate. And that's it. So what's in there? I haven't showed you uh, the dependencies, they were pre-installed because otherwise it takes too much time to display. Though in OCI, you have dependencies for Apache plus PHP, MySQL, Puppet Master, TFT PHPA, 73 Puppet packages, out of which 30 are Puppet OpenStack, uh, some PHP, Puppet, and shell scripts from OCI itself. OCI uses Puppet OpenStack upstream as a base, and then it adds a pair of classes and some dynamic PHP MySQL driven ENC. OCI can deploy many OpenStack services in a fully available fashion using SSL, including SSL re-encryption within the cluster itself. Everything is script scriptable and uses a REST API to uh, send the commands to OCI. Configuration of OCI is made through a simple configuration file, an ini file. There's a few important bits to address there, like the Debian repository addresses, uh, which are your trusted networks that may uh, re do hardware re uh, reporting, uh, and a few things that you may want to enable depending on of your hardware, like uh, Rack ADM or Megacli if you have this type of hardware. Before you start deploying, you need to start the script from OCI that is going to generate its own CA so that you can do such re-encryption. Then the Debian Live image must be generated. It's done through a simple a single command, OpenStack Cluster Installer Build Live Image. 
it uses internally Debian Live Build, uh, which is a very powerful tool. It, it's possible to customize the images, um, like uh, in ETC, Open Star Cluster Installer Live Image Editions. You can drop any files there and they're going to appear on your image. That's very convenient if you want to diagnose problems like hardware issues, if you want to do firmware upgrades and so on. It's also needed to configure a DHCP server to serve the type of subnet ranges that you wish to use. And now we are ready to PXE boot the servers. Yay! Hey. So let's see. The server boots over PXE, that's its Linux. It fetches the RAM disk and the kernel from HTTP, then boots on it. Then the server is going to fetch an IP address from the HTTP server and then fetches the SquashFS images over HTTP. That's the progress bar that you just saw here. And then once it's there, it's going to do the hardware discovery and images are going to like hardware server nodes are going to pop up on the OCI interface. The hardware discovery script will report a bunch of things like the chassis serial numbers, nick speeds, BIOS and IPMI firmware versions, product names, amount of RAM, block devices. Here's how it looks like from the OCI client side. So as you, what you're seeing is a bunch of VMs that I use on my development. They are just pop popping up one by one and the hardware discovery script is reporting to the central OCI server. As you may see, we can see that the machine with serial C4 has two hard drives while the first three have only one, and so on. So, just wait a little bit and more uh, servers will pop up. Once a hardware node is um, booted and reports to uh, OCI, then we can do OCI machine show and its serial number, and then we can see a bunch of things like um, the install status, the host name, uh, the hardware specs in a more detailed fashion than with OCI CLI machine show, um, the IPME, IPMI configuration, networking, and role specific values that we can tweak depending on what we want to do with the hardware node. Now that we have a bunch of hardware booted, let's start building a first cluster. So we start with OCI CLI cluster create Z. Infomaniac.ch is the domain name. Then we create, then we say that we want an NTP server for it. Otherwise it just uses the Debian default. And then we create two Swift regions. Even if you're doing compute, you need to create Swift regions. Then we create the networks there. Before creating the networks, we use locations. Locations are using the regions just set up earlier. So we first create a zone one location and a public one, which is going to hold our a public IP for the API. Then we create a management network using uh, this IP address and the location we just created. No means not a public thing. So then we create a VM network. So the VM network is for uh, the VXLAN traffic between uh, nodes. So VM net, enter. Uh, this environment is using uh, VMs and I'm not using VLANs. Therefore, uh, every network is going to be bound to a specific network card of the VMs. So here's the final result once all the network have been created. On the bottom of the screen here, you can see that I'm creating an IPMI network. That IPMI network can match a range from the HTTP. And if one hardware node boots on that range, then it's going to be assigned an IP 
for IPMI using the range defined on the IPMI network. So if I go to the next page, then you see IPMI addresses being assigned to the new servers. So uh, the one where you can see detect IPMI address field means that they are already set. Uh, the ones where it's still zero, it didn't happen yet because it needs another run of the hardware discovery uh, script so that it can report. Now that IPMI is set up, let's add machines to the cluster. So I got 19 VM to play with. Let's add, add the first machine C1 as a controller to the cluster. Okay, then we are going of course to set up three of them. C1, C2, C3, and then suspense. Let's add self monitor nodes. C4, C5, C6. Let's add network nodes now. So two of them will be enough. C7, C C8. So of course, on, when it's real hardware, you just type the real serial number of your server. Now we add three OSD nodes. CD and some uh, cinder volume machines. Two of them. Finally, some compute nodes. So everything on OCI CLI has a batch completion. D1, D2, D3, and let's see. Now we have all of our servers with the hostname pre-calculated, IP addresses already assigned. The next step is either to do OCI CLI machine install OS, and then either the hostname or, or the serial number of the machine, or simply OCI CLI cluster install Z. Then it's going to go through each machine one by one on the correct order, installing first the OS, then waiting for Puppet to run to go to the next role. So everything is scheduled in a nice order so that it's well enough optimized, but still giving a schedule. So this is nice already, but that's still not enough. When you have many machines, you may wish to go further in uh, automation. So manual setup is too much work. It's prone to error. It takes too much of your administrator time. It's very repetitive and boring. So let's go the extra mile and do a hands-free setup. First thing is you need to describe how is your physical network. So uh, over here, you can sell file indicating switch names, where they are in which data center, which row, which rack, what's the name of the location that we've set up already with OCI CLI location create. And we also can set up a compute aggregate for that rack. On top, you see product names with how many use every hardware is taking. Then we have hardware profiles. So you can define as many hardware profile as you like. A hardware profile is not bounded to a role, meaning that you can have multiple hardware profiles for a single role. What happens is um, OCI is filtering hardware uh, with what you are writing here. So you have product name in here. I wrote only a single one, but you can write many to match many type of product names. So PowerEdge R640 is from Dell. You can add HP or Lenovo, Gigabyte, any type. You just define how, how much memory and hard, hard drive. And when you do that, you can enable uh, the setup of the RAID profiles so that whenever a machine enters the live system, before the hardware is the operating system is being installed, then the RAID profile can be applied. So here we have a compute node with a system disk, so uh, a bit less than 300 gig, and a much bigger RAID one for var lib nova instances. You can also see that uh, there's machine sets 
So machine set is uh, options you would um, type to an OCL, OCI CLI machine set command. So here we say that even if there is Ceph available in the cluster, we don't want that compute node to use it for var libnova instances. You also see that uh, we are setting up uh, CPU mode and CPU model, which matches, of course, uh, the hardware product na name that you see above. The point being that with this type of uh, hardware, I want a specific a CPU model. And um, because of what we've set up earlier here, there's compute aggregates and uh, over there and location names, then we can set that we want that node to be in the compute aggregates that, that we've defined on the auto racking.json. There's also uh, ad host Intel compute because I don't know, maybe I have also a bunch of AMD machines and I want them to be in another compute aggregate. So what will be the process of doing a hand-free setup? So you plug your server into the rack, start it up, it PXE boots, then OCI setups the IPMI uh, configuration, like IPs, passwords, and so on. Then firmware upgrade happens. You may want to upgrade your BIOS, for example, and then the server may reboot after BIOS upgrade. Then IPMI may be upgraded too. Then RAID profile is applied, LLDP information is processed and transformed into racking information. The server is then added to the cluster depending on its role and its hardware profile. Then if you have enabled the DNS plugin, then OCI can uh, call that script and register your machine into your DNS. The operating system is then installed, then the machine reboots. Uh, once it has finished rebooting, a password for root can be set up and eventually saved into a vault using, again, a plugin script. Then Puppet is run once by a first boot script. Once um, Puppet has been successfully applied, uh, OCI can call a monitoring script that will register your machine into your monitoring system. And finally, uh, Puppet as the agent is started forever. That's about it, about the full overview of what OCI does. Though I have a bit more to tell you about. OCI can do a bit more advanced um, networking like BGP to the host when you don't have compute machines in the cluster. For example, you could set up a very large Swift using BGP to the host. That scales wonderfully. When you have compute machines into the rack, then they do need uh, L2 connectivity to the rack. For that, OCI can use BGP routed network using that uh, patch for Neutron that you see over there. In the future for OCI, I wish to add more services to it, like designate Ironic, Magnum, Manila, Trove, Watcher. The list goes on and on and on, as you may know. Thanks for watching. Thanks for, thanks to Infomaniac for sponsoring my work on OCI and giving me the opportunity to present to you uh, this solution during the virtual summit. Now this is time for Q and A. Thank you for watching.